In this video, we'll look at ways of integrating JavaScript code in an HTML document. Let's begin. An HTML document contains multiple elements including style sheets. JavaScript, along with HTML and CSS, forms the trinity that has resulted in the creation of mind-blowing web applications and services. When it comes to integrating JavaScript, HTML provides the script tag which can be used to express JavaScript directly within the HTML document or reference to an external JavaScript file. Let's check out both approaches. I am in Microsoft VS Code, my code editor of choice, and we have an HTML document open. This page contains an H1 tag and a button. It also has a style sheet to go along. For now, I'll just right click and copy the path to this HTML file on my disk and we'll just open it directly in the browser like so. Opening files like this uses the file protocol, which isn't the recommended way to work with web pages or JavaScript because your browser restricts the use of local files and several features. We'll come back to this point in a moment. For now, the contents of our page are visible. I'll also open the Chrome Developer Tools, which allows me to work with the console, which offers an interactive environment to execute JavaScript code. So I can type a statement, press enter, and get an immediate response. We'll keep playing with the console as we go along. Now, to embed JavaScript code in an HTML document, you can create the script tag. Inside the confines of this script tag, you can write JavaScript as you know it. For instance, here I am writing a console.log statement. When I refresh this page, the browser engine parses the page from top to bottom. As soon as it encounters the script block, it dispatches its contents to the JavaScript engine, which is responsible for executing the code within the block. And that's how we get the output of this console.log statement. The script tag also takes an optional type property, which can be set to text slash JavaScript, which essentially tells the browser that the contents are JavaScript. This used to be a requirement. However, since HTML5 is no longer needed as such, so we can avoid it completely. By the way, I've built the script tag in the head section of the page, which is quite a popular and widely used convention. Another place is right before the closing body tag. The logic behind the placement of the script block here is simple. Your browser reads and parses the page from top to bottom. By the time it reaches the script block here, it has all the HTML elements in place, which you might have targeted in your JavaScript code. This naturally ensures that all elements are present and loaded before your JavaScript takes over for manipulation. There are, however, other ways to circumvent this issue, but as a general convention, we'll always keep our script tags here, right before the closing body tag. Now, JavaScript inside your HTML page is fine, but isn't recommended because of several reasons. Your code cannot be shared if it sits in an HTML page, so you cannot write code which multiple web pages might want to use. Second, separation of concerns is a critical development practice. Just like a CSS file is used to store style sheets away from the HTML document, a JavaScript file is used to store all JavaScript code. So I'll create a file named main.js right besides my HTML and CSS file. And we'll again use a script tag. Only this time we'll use the SRC or source property to refer to this external file. This brings in the JavaScript file and you can tuck away all your code in one or more JS files like this. So let me create a function that returns the time and we'll create another one which renders a console.log and displays the time. Back in the HTML file, I'll create a unique property on my button called onClick. Don't worry if this is getting too technical. Basically, we're telling the browser that if someone clicks on the button, we need to execute the greetMe function, which would be available to the web page to execute, though it comes from an external file. The onClick property creates an event listener in the browser. 
Later on, we'll delegate this work to JavaScript, but for now, let's stick to this code. We'll refresh the page in the browser, and now if I hit the button on the page, I get the time here in the console. This is running within the HTML file, which we have loaded using the file protocol directly from disk. This, as I mentioned, has limitations and should never be used as a standard practice during web development. Instead, you should serve your web pages using a web server. In the first module, we talked about installing Node.js and I hope you've done so by now. Because now you can open the console and type npx http serve and this will download and execute a simple HTTP server right in this folder. You get these URLs of which we can use the topmost URL which uses the local host IP address on port 8080 to access the site which is being served using the HTTP protocol. This would never cause any problems or limitations. But again, for our purposes, we don't need to do all this because we have a complete tool chain and a kit built right for you and we briefly discussed this in the first module as well. So to create a complete end-to-end -to -end tool chain, you just have to type this on the terminal where hello-js is the name of the folder which you wish to create. Once the setup is complete, we can go into the folder and type npm run dev and press enter and this kicks up a complete end-to-end -end server with a local URL as seen here. Just open this URL in your browser like so. We have here an HTML page where you can see the use of a script tag with its type set to module and we'll come back to this later. For now, there is one thing you should know here that if you build the same example as we did before, it wouldn't work under this arrangement because of the way our toolchain handles the JavaScript code. Want to learn more about how to take your web pages to the next level by harnessing JavaScript? It's easy with Knowledge Hut. With our outcome-based immersive learning approach, we are fundamentally disrupting the way new age technologies are learned. You'll get to learn, practice, assess, gain insights on your learning, and personalize your learning journey on our easy-to-navigate, AI-powered, skill-building platform, PRISM. Stay tuned for more such videos and explore more about how you can equip yourself with immediately demonstrable in-demand skills that will help you get job ready. And don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon to get notified so you don't miss out on our upcoming videos.